how do you get people involved? How do you get anyone to care? Position the problem, demonstrate that you're going to offer the solution and then tease them in to come and watch more. Let's talk through some of those kind of breakthrough bits and chunks. There's the short form video. Yeah. How do you approach that? Our short form video strategy is all focused around how we can reach new people and keep them engaged for as long as possible. We're actually not super interested in directing them to the long form piece of content. So we'll let them know where it is, but we're not selling, which I think is really important. We're not kind of pushing it down their throats that they need to go and see the long form because actually short form is a is a visual art in itself that people are consuming more and more and more. Eventually they might talk about it offline and you might develop these warm leads that then turn into people who go and watch, but we're not pushing it down their throats. So in terms of our, how the process looks is we'll get the, we'll usually have someone sitting in on the, the recording. So we have a green room, someone's listening live, speed up the process because then they can highlight the moments that we've come to learn, perform best on our different channels. So we know that anything about sort of health, whether it's mental and physical, relationships, performs really well on Instagram. We know anything to do with work-life balance or careers or entrepreneurship bangs on LinkedIn. We know that on TikTok, the craziest thing happen, the craziest things happen. So anything that, anything from a 10 minute clip of, I mean, we shared this week, a 10 minute clip of Maisie Williams, literally sobbing and breaking down in tears. And it's got 7 million views to two second behind the scene moments. You know, TikTok's our space where we do a lot of experimental stuff. So we'll get the long form piece. Someone will sit in They'll highlight those key moments. They'll then take that. Sometimes it's an editor, sometimes it's a social person. If they can't be live, they'll be watching the recording. They're marking down the moments. And then it will go to our kind of dedicated clips editors, of which we have two. And sometimes we work with freelancers if we, you know, there's a volume of them as well. And they will work religiously to make sure that those clips have the perfect story arc, one, the best hook possible, which might not be the start of the clip, you might be dragging the middle to the start so that you get those people in. Those most th- there's those first three seconds, as we all know, those first one and a half, two seconds are the most pivotal to your watch time. If you can get them in for that, you're probably going to hook them for 5, 10, 15, which means your content is going to get shown to more people. So that's why that's so important. And then to come back to your story arc, has it got a beginning, middle and end? Is it serving a point? Do you finish the clip going cool, I learned something, or that was interesting, or that felt complete. And I think that's really missing from a lot of people's content at the moment. They will see the podcast, slice it up, maybe using the kind of some of these AI tools, which I don't think are producing the best clips yet. And you'll kind of end up with a a bit of a washy, unproduced point. So that's that's kind of the basic level. And we're also not set on every podcast episode must produce 10 clips. Some episodes will get 20 clips. Some episodes will get two. But we're not going to compromise the standard to force them to happen. So I think it's also really important to have like flexibility because not every guest is perfect for every platform. And forcing and repurposing it straight into those other platforms is probably not going to be where the audience are going to you know best receive it. So really think about your platforms. Really think about that story arc and that and that three second hook. And then you know short form has evolved so much in the last few years. How can you level it up? Can you bring graphics in? Can you bring sound in? Can you bring BTS moments in? Can you bring com- comedy in? What can you do to level up that clip to make it as engaging as possible? And we're testing stuff all the time from the, the subtitle style. Are we doing dynamic subs? Are we doing colorful subs? Are we moving the hook from the middle to the start? Because actually that's more engaging. Are we trying 10 minute clips? Are we trying 10 second clips? We're just constantly trying new things because it's the only way we can learn what's, what the sticking points are right now. And I say right now because I'll probably change in three months. Yeah. The platforms change, the trends change. So it's all about just constantly trying new things, analyzing, seeing what worked, seeing what didn't and doing more of what did. Yeah, that's gold. That's an absolute masterclass because so many people, they think, I'll just stick my, my podcast into Opus or whatever the AI tool is. It will spit out some clips. I'll stick them in the schedule. Bob's your uncle, 100K followers, here I come. I know. And it's like, there's like levels to all of these games, right? And it's not to say that that, that other approach isn't wrong as a starting point, 100%. but then to get your data, um, but then there are levels to the game. And I, th- I think it's, what we've also started to do is create a short form st- first strategy, which is challenging when you're working with a long form piece, 
But what we're always looking for is kind of the before the podcast starts and the after the podcast starts, those moments, those behind the scenes moments, those intimate moments that no one gets to see where you're off camera or it's happening kind of out of the podcast environment perform unbelievably well. So it's also worth thinking kind of, you've got this whole filming time. Can you use bloopers? Can you use the bits that aren't meant to go on camera? Can you use the bits that don't make the final edit because something happens and it's funny? That's a short form first strategy rather than working backwards from the long form. Yeah. And I think we're starting to see a, a turn in that in that moment. And that's why we, you know, we're bringing someone on full time. This is gonna start sounding like a hiring hiring pitch. And we're bringing on someone full time to focus on, on a that. DOAC first social strategy. There isn't a case of just churning out what we've got second as like a second thought. It needs to be a first thought and it needs to be prioritized because podcasts aren't organic growth platforms. You don't get external uh, search and you know search views through like Spotify or Apple Podcasts. You kind of do through YouTube, but not everyone's even filming their podcast still. So you need those external platforms to be driving views into those platforms. Those are those those are your reach platforms, and they go hand in hand. Let's talk about something that I think nails that, which is the trailers. How did they come to be? Oh, I I can't take any credit for the trailers. We have the most fantastic. I mean, you talk about goats, like the greatest of all time trailer editor and shout out Ant. Um, and essentially what was, what it started being is we thought, okay, you have a show, you have a movie, you have a TV program. How do they promote it? There'll be a trailer, there'll be a, a sizzle, there'll be something that draws you in to tease the episode coming out. And we've always thought about doing things differently to how everyone else is doing them. So no one else was doing trailers. No one else was promoting really through social because not many people in the UK were filming. We were one of the first, you know, podcasts, shows to take the video side of it really seriously and not compromise and not use Zoom. So our standards have always stayed kind of here and now we're going above and above and above. And we started with kind of, Jack would just produce a kind of short form version of, of the long form with the most hooky part at the start and some sort of cliffhanger. And that's what our model was. And then we brought in someone full time who at heart is a storyteller. They, I mean, he is a genius. If you ever kind of have the opportunity to engage with him, like hundred percent engage with him. He is the leading, you know, leading trailer, the best trailer editor that exists. He's come from, you know, working in Disney and movies. So it brings another mindset and a different approach and people won't notice, but every single trailer has a new experiment running in it there's some sort of detail happening, some sort of things being turned or changed or amended or being trialed so that they're constantly evolving and constantly getting better. And they've become synonymous with the brand. And what we think is amazing, but also quite funny is seeing everyone creating Doak style trailers as a result of it. Um, it's become kind of like industry standard and industry leading in that way, which is just remarkable to us because we never could have expected that. But it it's just thinking from first principles. I'm gonna sound like Steve here, but how do you get someone to watch something? And it, you know, how do you get people to want more? Serve them a juicy hook, draw them in, and then leave them wanting more at the end. You can do it with a clip, but even better, mash up all the best bits and pop it together in a trailer. And it's just thinking about it from, from how do you get people involved? How do you get anyone to care, position the problem, demonstrate that you're going to offer the solution and then tease them in to come and watch more. And the amount of times I'll kind of be on, um, you know, if I haven't, and I'll be totally honest, if I haven't been there for the podcast recording and it's maybe not a guess that I think, oh, you know, that's super up my street. I'll watch the trailer and I'm in. And that's how you make someone who doesn't care, care. Yeah, they're genius. And like you say, they've created a whole kind of industry in themselves of like just copycats and all the rest of it. And no one can do it anywhere near the same level. So it's- I like mean, incredible. we're like, we we need a second one and we can't find anyone who could do it. Yeah, It's such an art. And when I say, you know, everyone's trying to replicate what they see as the final product. No one is seeing what work is going into those. Yeah, The back and forth, the detail, the storyboarding, the planning, the iterations, the sound obsession, the, you know, all, what, taking out the audio and just listening purely to the audio for the moments that create that emotion. No one's seeing the work that goes in, so no one will be able to replicate it. Yeah. 